So good afternoon, everyone. And I'd like to start before the session. I'd like to start with a question. So I want to know how many of you guys are operators or working on OpenStack operations. So please raise your hand. Oh, so many. So uh, how many of you think you have survived for over one year? Okay, not that many. All right, so let's get started to talk about how to survive in this wild, wild open start world. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm Joshua. I'm from IBM Bluemix Private Cloud, which, is, which was previously IBM Blue Box. And now I'm working on the operations thing. OK, and hello, my name is uh, He Fan. Uh, I'm the cloud architect in IBM China Lab, uh, currently focusing on uh, Blue Box, which is the uh, Bluemix Private Cloud landing uh, architecture implementation and also operations. Shoot. Working? Just. All right, sort of that. So uh, before this February, I had been working as a DevOps engineer for years and with zero operations uh, experience. But this year, we plan to land uh, the IBM Bluemix uh, private cloud to uh, support each IBM's private cloud uh, business there. So uh, then I started as a operator. And after eight months, I uh, am still alive and very good and good enough to stand in front of you to uh, share with you uh, this very interesting journey. So let's start with a little bit background. Oh. All right. So. Uh, as you may know, that Bluemix private cloud, which was used to be IBM Bluebox, is the uh, IBM's private cloud as a service offering, so which is based on, based on OpenStack, and which means that IBM will manage the cloud for the customers. And uh, this year, we just landed this service to China in order to support the IBM's cloud business in that country. And before the landing, we have no operations team in China, so we spent several months to build a a new OpenStack operations team from scratch. So this is why we're here to talk about this story. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is, will not be that technical, but uh, we'll be uh, talk about various aspects of how to ramping up a OpenStack operations team, as you can read from the agenda. And uh, it's like a bit of framework stuff and consists of methods and practices. We will also spend some time on some po topics like upgrade, HA, live migration things. So uh, cloud computing is a cool thing. So you will admit that. So you thought you would be work like that. But the real world is maybe kind of cruel. So operating OpenStack is like fighting gigantic monsters. And there will be disasters after disasters. So just admit that. So it's quite not that, not that cool, but very interesting. And you surely need a strong team to do that. All right, so let's talk about how to define an OpenStack operations team first, step by step. So firstly, you, get, you, you need to know how, to, how your cloud offering is operated. So this includes how you need to know how your cloud offering is uh, provided. Is it public, private, or hybrid? And you also need to know what is the SLA between you and the customers. And another thing is that you need to uh, figure out if there is any other stakeholders uh, like the business partners, uh, the data centers, and the backend uh, the deploy development team. So after figuring out what these key business entities, you need to figure out the processes in order to connect each of them together in order to make the whole thing flow. And then the next thing is that you need tools because uh, if without tools, the processes will be just like documents, so you need the tools to uh, implement the processes. And the last thing is the most important thing is the teaming, so you need people. You need to see how to uh, run your team in order to uh, make the, the customer happy. So let's look into uh, these four things one by one now. OK, so here comes first the uh, operating model. So uh, I remember back to the very beginning of this landing thing uh, when I was discussing uh, how to build the new team for our China business with my colleague in Seattle. And he just gave out a very high level diagram, just like what I will be showing here, uh, to, sort out, to sort out the key business entities in the offering, so which turned out to be very, very useful. 
Uh, so I think the most important three things are the customer and the, our operations team and the SLA. So the customer will basically use our offering and we operate that. And this offering should comply with the SLA. And there also be uh, support entry points that uh, the customers can use them to uh, raise their requests or issues to us and these entry points will be routed to the operations team. And also you, need, you will need to figure out if there's any um, business partners or uh, third party data centers and the development team. So uh, basically you will also be working with them to resolve some uh, long, long run issues. All right, so this is the first step. And let's come to the next one. So next one is, sorry? No, just additional comments. So by the way, uh, in many cases, you will also have this security and the compliance in this diagram, but uh, we are not seeing here, just a footnote. Thank you. And so after knowing all of these essentials, so time to figure out how to make them flow. So uh, it's about the process. I'm not listing all of them here, but uh, uh, some things I think which are most important. Uh, so the first thing is operation tiers. So this is mainly about the rules and responsibilities. Uh, so and uh, we define these uh, different tiers just by uh, skill level or control power over the uh, production systems. Uh, so basically we'll be using this uh, model. So in front we'll have a tier one team called support. So support team is just standing in the first line of defense and to face the customers directly and uh, they will try to resolve the issues, but if not, they will try to escalate to the tier two, which is the operations team. So the operations team will accept the uh, uh, escalation from tier one, and in, in addition to that, uh, they will also be responsible for uh, the cloud deployment, upgrade, administration thing, and uh, there will also be tier two, tier three teams, uh, like the open set engineering or the network engineering who actually builds up the product. So this is just a reference. Okay, this, so the second thing is quite simple. So the escalation flows will define how your tickets, your alerts, and your incidents uh, go between different tiers or teams. So it's just like quite similar to the escalation policies which you can see in the page duty. So the thing will be quite complex. So you need to define the flows in order to know when the issue happens, where to go. Yeah, so the next thing is uh, about incident management. So incident management is, oops, is the um, management of when an unplanned interruption or a reduction in the quality of service happen. So you should need to define the, the key properties for the incident, like the priority level, uh, how to define the incident, and using all tools, you will need to match your outages, and how frequently you will need to update customers, and in which way, like you are using the customer ticket, or just use some third-party service like uh, thispage.io. By the way, the response time and uh, the, this time values here is only for reference, so it will be determined by uh, your own stack, your SLA level, which is uh, a generic value. Uh, listed here. Yeah. So the next is the change management. So change management changes happens just every day, and you have to measure them. So first, you need to define different types of changes. So including normal changes like cloud upgrade, uh, or just implement the CPU OS subscription for customers. And also there will be some urgent changes like when a customer uh, just hits into the uh, capacity limit that we should uh, expand the cloud for them very very quickly. And also you need to define, uh, you need to describe how the changes will be rolled out uh, in your change management, like it's just like a MOP, something. And another important thing is when the change will be rolled out. So this includes uh, what is the size of the window and when the window will happen, and also the lead time uh, between when you notify the customer and the, and the uh, change will be rolled out. Also, you should need review and approval to make sure that the uh, key persons are notified and, and agree on this change. And the last thing is, is still communication. You need to let the customer know what, you know, the penalty will happen. All right, the next thing is about shifts. So it's about people. So you will need to, you need, you will need to define how your team, uh, how your human resources are utilized and for a uh, best coverage, well maintain, well space, spread the pain, so which is quite important. So and you also need to define how your shifts are handed off. All right, the last thing is about security. 
So security will, uh, there will be several activities like health check and patch reporting. Uh, you need to scan your network ports and also you need to verify uh, the accesses into your production systems from time to time. All right, so that is all for the process thing. So uh, then that's into the next thing, is about tooling. So there are hundreds of thousands of tooling uh, to support the operations, but uh, in order to make this chart clean, I'm trying my best to group them into categories. Six. Yeah. yeah, and six is a good number. Uh, so the first thing is monitoring. So monitoring, I just grouped monitoring, alerting, uh, log aggregation, and dashboard into one. So there are some very famous tools like Sensu, Nagios, Elk, and uh, like Uchiwa, Kibana. So you can choose from either of them or just build it all. And the next one is collaboration. So collaboration here means the internal team collaboration. So this will include chat. So you can, you can just use Slack or you can build your own XMPP-based chat system. It's quite easy. And also the fair sharing, this means uh, not only share your documents online, but also support online document, online edit, so that people can uh, work together uh, more easily. And the third thing is project Kanban. So uh, operations team will sometimes do some development things, so you should need a place to track the efforts. So things like Trello will help you with that. And the last thing is the shift management. All right, next thing is... Uh, Cloud management. So this is a topic which ranges very wide, but uh, I think there will be some key components like the CMDB, so which is used to store, to read, to update your cloud configuration when you are building a new cloud or update the existing clouds. So and the next thing is about asset management. So it's mainly about it's, it's mainly about uh, how to see uh, how your customer is using using the cloud. It's like kind of like a capacity report. And you also need systems to cover uh, change management and incident management. All right, the next thing is uh, knowledge base, so two parts. Uh, the first is the internal knowledge base that uh, will be used by your operators to uh, know how to operate the clouds and also the external ones for the customers to know your product uh, better. And next is security. So security will include uh, access management, so it will be about authentication and authorization. Mm -hmm. So also you need uh, things like uh, NASA scanner to scan, to make sure your network are very secure, and also things like the, the patch uh, tools or the uh, server specification tools to make sure that your cloud is uh, safe uh, in terms of operating systems and software configurations. And it's worth noting that in our Bloomix private cloud, we have integrated this healthy checking and patching reporting into our deployment and Ansible playbooks. So if you are interested, you can check it out on GitHub, it's in, or in Ursula, so you can know what we, are, what we are doing with this stuff. So it's quite neat. All right, so the next part is the biggest part, and it's about the customer support. So you should need a ticketing system too. Uh, in order to allow the customers to raise tickets and us to resolve them. And also the custom chat, so the customer can get uh, quicker responses from you, maybe within 90 minutes, uh, sorry, 90 seconds, which is our SLA. And also you need a something like nice reply, so in order to get the feedback from the customers that you will be able to know uh, how your team is doing. And the next thing is all about communication. So you need things, you need the tools to communicate uh, things like cloud, cloud level or site level maintenance events with your customers when your cloud is down or there are some network interruptions within some data centers. All right, so this is all about tooling. And next thing is teaming. So teaming is, uh, I think the teaming is about the size of the team and how your team will be uh, on ships, so it's really, uh, it will really be determined from your SLA and your service availability. So uh, basically, I think 24-7 uh, is mostly like a hard requirement nowadays, but uh, in our cases, it's not. So at the start, we just started with a 16-5 uh, shift because there was no that many uh, active customers for the beginning, but now we just boosted up from uh, that uh, availability to 24-7 as well. 
So uh, also you need to spread the pain uh, between the team members. So uh, you don't you don't want to have one person on duty for 17 uh, or maybe uh, 10 hours and the other people just uh, for the maybe two or three hours. So and also you need to consider how to eliminate the interruptions as possible because interruptions can kill people's efficiency when uh, he's working. So here's just a quick example. So uh, this is a commonly seen uh, at work on core module. So we just I will start with this, but we found this this kind of model is not uh, cannot uh, work very well coordinated the operations tasks. So uh, the commu so people will need to communicate with e with each other who will be taking what task, and so and they will also also often to step on each other's feet, and so we now just switch to a new model. It's like a three layer. So there will be a person on charge in the front. So during his on charge hours, maybe one or two hours, or maybe 30 minutes, so he will be uh, responsible to acknowledge all the incoming alerts, uh, tickets, and the chats. So, but his task is not to resolve everything. His, his task is to, uh, to, re to distribute these tasks in the best way so that the people at work can uh, handle them. And the people at work can uh, be focusing on the long time tasks until he is interrupted by the charge person. All right, so this is just an example, but not must. All right, so the next part is about the two integration. So uh, this is a very big topic, but I'm not going to go too deep and too concrete here. I I'm just want to briefly introduce what we have done, what we are doing and approaching. So I think Many of them are working with a lot of screens every day, so which tends, which looks very, very cool, but that will also mean that you are working with too many systems and you are jumping from one system to another very, very frequently. So that means, also means a lot of interruption again. So it will be nice if you can use your tools or use some automation or any de uh, deployment development effort to kill all these interruptions. So it will be very cool if you are using one place and with one click to get everything done. So at the start, so we can just look at this diagram, maybe a little smaller, but uh, this shows that uh, some typical systems when a operator needs to work uh, for his daily uh, uh, jobs, like you, he will need to be working with shift uh, management tools, or customer support, or data center support, things like that. Uh, for some uh, long run tasks, he will be jumping from this si uh, system to another, so which will kill a lot of time. So it will be good if we can start by integrating all these uh, op operations into one platform. And there's one, as you may know, that's a de facto platform called Slack. So you can just simply develop some uh, Slack ports or slash commands to do your trick. So here's an example. So I. So this is the lovely goat we are using in our teams. And this goat, what he's doing, so he's just helping us to match our charge. So with this board, you will be easily uh, see who is on charge now and who will be on charge next. And when you are, you need to go away from the keyboard for something urgent or maybe just for lunch, you can use one command to override your schedule to another people. And when you come back, you can get it back. So yeah. this is only one quick sample, uh, only one, Board we are using to support our daily jobs. So we have uh, the others, boards and slash commands to support this thing. Yep. But the idea here is to allow operator without leaving the context, then he can deal with a lot of operation tasks. Yeah. And if you have a, a further interest, uh, actually there's already an, a lot of sessions and uh, discussions around the chat ops, yep. uh, which is, uh, yeah, I remember there's already a session in previous summits. So you can check the YouTube channel and also search for chat ops uh, for the, their implementations. Yeah, because the daily life of operators will be highly on chatting. So it will be good if you can work on, on the same, same system when he is talking with the other colleagues. Yep. All right, so the next page is the way that we are approaching, I think. So we are work, we're still working. Uh, so this is about queue order interruptions. So we need to automate the workflows across different platforms. So this is mainly aimed at the long run tasks, including cloud deployment, which will be, which may take for hours, and the change tasks. 
so I just, just introduce our basic idea here. So to, in order to do this, you will need to break the thing, break this down into several layers. So down, down there, you will need some common libraries, uh, some generic common libraries on which you can build, uh, you can encapsulate the uh, tasks and operations. Uh, against different platforms. As you can see here, you can build your own uh, inter-operation uh, libraries with Slack, with Zensu, with uh, OpenStack, with Pandem. And on them, you can, uh, with these uh, automated operations, you can then start to build the tasks, build them to the higher level, uh, things like jobs and pipelines, just like uh, what we used to do, we, we used to do with Jenkins. So you build Jenkins jobs, and then you use Jenkins build flows to uh, organize them in to support the long, long tasks. All right, so I think that's it for me. And uh, then my mate fan will be talking about some cliche that will boom happens, so as you may know. Thanks, right. Joshua. Uh, so Joshua already talked about a lot of about this. We have these two keywords for session. One is the quick ramp up of OpenStack operations, and the second is uh, survival. So this uh, second part is more technical, more about the survival part. Um, it just to pick up some typical scenarios that need uh, the OpenStack operation team to pay attention. Uh, it might be a trap, it might be a miss. So things need to be uh, deal with caution. Done. Okay. So the first one is change management. So we, uh, as Joshua also mentioned, uh, we. For the clouds, we have the CMDB to store the cloud information. What's the current state? What is the uh, might also be access information and uh, how you, the the metadata you use to deploy and uh, upgrade. Um, so this is basically uh, same as the approach we mentioned as infrastructure as code. Uh, and for many uh, different teams have different approaches. Some they do not use a database actually. Uh, they use GitHub, either uh, private or uh, self-hosted, to do the checking for these cloud changes. And uh, we can also integrate with Garrett or other reviewed uh, tooling. So uh, basically, it's like the picture listed below. Uh, you have changes coming, and you do a, a pull request for the changes. You verify, review, and after it's done, you get merged in the master. Um, but the one interesting thing here is for coding, you can, has, you can have as many branches you want, but for a cloud, the state, it can only be one. So it's like the main, the master branch in the GitHub repo. So basically, we can have incoming change requests like uh, uh, from customer. They want to do a, a expansion. They want to do some uh, particular change like uh, overcommit things like that. And also, we have internal enhancement to be rolled out, either upgrade or uh, you have some compliance requests to fix the security things that changes. So the problem here is to manage the priorities and dependencies. Because if you have multiple changes ongoing, and they are all also dealing with the, the, the CMDB, it can be a disaster. You have conflict, or you have yeah. Uh, in appropriate order to do these operation tasks, then you will need more effort to mitigate or to recover from the a bad state of the cloud. Yeah, I remember correctly. So we, for maybe for one time or two, we just revert the availability zone settings for the customer because we, there are some code conflict that we did not notice. So right, which it is, just sucks. Uh, <laughs> which means to have a consistency in the uh, cloud state management, we will need a, a careful planning for that. Okay, uh, second thing is OpenStack upgrade. Uh, actually, uh, this is uh, another big topic. There are hundreds of sessions about that. And uh, uh, generically, to have a, a minimum uh, impact, which is less disruptive upgrade, uh, it has certain prerequisite or requirements for the deployment automation. Um, the two basic things, one is the, you have uh, the cloud configuration control. Another thing is you have the item potency, which is you can keep running the upgrade and uh, it will reach the converged state. Um, another part is the upgrade process design, which is basically the orchestration 
how you define the upgrade process and how you execute that and uh, if something bad happens, how do you roll back and recover. Um, I listed, uh, the diagram is just an uh, example to show the, what you have in the controller nodes and uh, what you have in the data plane. Uh, and the reference is actually a document uh, written by uh, Blue Box guys, Jesse Kating and other people. You can just uh, search the keyword on Google. It's a very good reference to um, uh, as a reference about how you design the upgrade process and uh, what are the other items to consider. Yeah, and also you can also check out the, our Earth code. So there is a YAML file uh, called, I think called upgrade or YAML, so which is public publicly seen. So uh, in there, you can, you also, you can also see uh, how we do the upgrade. So you can see the sequence we are performing the upgrade against different components. Yep. OK. Uh, high availability, which is uh, almost my favorite topic. So HA, uh, so today, uh, no matter you set up the cloud, operate the cloud for yourself, your own uh, organization, or you uh, provide that for your customers. Uh, we always have the HA in the architecture of the cloud. We have HA everywhere, like the infrastructure network, the open stack controllers, uh, the routers, the level three, and uh, all these services, a database or message queue, they are HA everywhere. And the goal is to eliminate the single point of failure, of course, and also HA will allow us to, to do some things that you cannot do without HA, like non-disruptive upgrade, or you want to also benefit from the uh, load ba benefit from the HA about load balancing. But uh, and, and also the inherent availability is easy to be calculated. It's the mean time to failure you get divided by uh, mean time to failure plus the recovery time. Um, so what I want to talk about is the dark side, dark side of HA which is uh, sometimes when HA really failed, it's not easy to recover. Uh, basically, the, you, you not just need to recover the service, but also the HA mechanism itself. Um, as an example, I posted uh, this screenshot here. Uh, you got a Neutron Level 3 agent list uh, hosting router. You see two active agents to actually, and uh, the HA state is both active. It's a typical brand split for the level three agent. And now what, what should we do? What do we do? Do we restart the agent or do we re delete the router and recreate? I can only say uh, good luck. But the problem here is um, uh, we can deal with this uh, level three agent or router but uh, the most important thing is to recover the HA mechanism underlying to support this high availability. For example, you have uh, the different agents to run, to uh, create and maintain the uh, two routers, maybe on different network nodes, and uh, each of them, they will communicate to each other with this uh, VRP protocol. They will use uh, maybe multicast to communicate with the demon like uh, keep live D, keep us alive. And if that heartbeat thing is not being recovered, uh, no matter you do a quick fix on this, on this nose, it, the same symptom can happen again, which is we do, don't want to see. So the complexity is something needs to be deal with caution, and it will also impact the recovery time. Um, one of the suggestions here is uh, we can, the, the, the best case is we have a monitoring mechanism for the HA itself, and also we have uh, accordingly a recover automation to recover that part, so we don't need to be in a bad state about the availability. And library migration, um, this part is also interesting, and uh, uh, in the, Previous years, uh, we saw there are a lot of debate on that about what is the appropriate scope of live migration. So, live, if you try this Nova live, live migrate, 
or with the, the block uh, parameter, uh, does it work? If particular to this question, the answer will be yes. So line migrate will work and uh, it's stable, but it's not something we want to abuse in the operation context. Um, to the right, you can see it's a diagram. Um, I don't want to uh, try to scare you, but uh, this is actually the NOAA line migrate workflow. So look the, the, the view from internal, the components and uh, uh, code flow to make line migration actually happen. Um, it's very complex. And uh, uh, sometimes if we, we rely on this to do a day-to-day -day operation, it can be a disaster. For example, uh, line migration, we can actually do automation on that, which means uh, integrate with some uh, PFA, like a predictive failure analysis. If the hardware has got alert sending, we can hook it up to a line migration, and uh, it will give you more time to fix the hardware issues without uh, dealing with uh, SLA challenge. But uh, if the things are hooked up with automation, you cannot control what is, being, what is actually happening, uh, like the other operations running on the cloud. And uh, uh, if you don't have enough capacity, there will be a chaos, like VMs just keep moving in and out from here to there and back. Uh, so uh, line migration is something we need and uh, is useful, but uh, better to be in limited scenarios typically just four of them. Uh, one is you do want to deal with the hardware replacement, and second thing is uh, uh, you want to evac evacuate, then you have, can have uh, maintenance on a particular node. And uh, there are other things like uh, customer requested. Uh, you, need to be handle, you need to handle a capacity change, things like that. But uh, uh, if you want to use automation with that, better with caution. And also, uh, an integrated pre-migration and post-migration validation uh, is also very necessary for this to be successful. Yeah, and I think another point is that uh, I think the operations team or the other team is also responsible to, for, to educate the customers to how to use the clouds uh, in an appropriate way, because uh, I'm not sure if your customer is like this, but our customers, we, they may not have any HA, so when they want to, uh, when a maintenance come, uh, come, so they will, uh, we need to shut down that machine and they will just jump up and ask for, you know. So I think it's also very important for us to uh, talk more to the customers and educate them to, like, make them best use, to make them best to uh, use this uh, open stack. Okay, I think we reached the last Advertise page. time. Ad advertisement time. <laughs> so we have uh, the open cloud sessions running uh, in the room 116. Uh, you still have the, four yeah, sessions. you still have, uh, it's the right time to catch the latest four, so welcome to join. It's just a few steps away. Yeah, so that's it for today, and if you have any questions, you can come to the microphone and you can talk. So we only have one mic. So hopefully everything is clear. <laughs> thank, okay, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time.